our statutes recognize and embrace our customs. And in this intricate dance between the two, it's a side-by-side -side operation to validate marriages contracted. Today on Law Express, we discuss the registration of customary marriages and divorce. My name is Noella Seju. This is Law Express. Don't go away. We'll be right back after this commercial break. Bishop David Owusu Tichi is a private legal practitioner who also serves as the Bishop of Trinity Praise Christian Center and works as an architect at Deck Consult. He enjoys playing the piano and saxophone. Yao Edinam Kofi is a private legal practitioner and land economist, as well as the co-founder and co-editor of the Ghana Law Hub. In his leisure time, he is passionate about reading historical books. Noela Seydu, she's a private legal practitioner and a consistent member of our three lawyer panel on the show every week. She also doubles as the host of the show. She likes to play tennis and read. So basically, when we talk of customary marriage, mm -hmm. uh, we are looking not necessarily about the union between a man and a woman. It's actually a union between the man's family and the woman's family. So it's basically bringing together two families together. And then this is reflected in the habitation of the man and the woman. That is what we refer to as customary marriage. And it's got its historical antecedents. I think I'll allow my brother here to throw a little light on it, and I'll chip in again. Oh, okay. So historically, I mean, customer law has been with us for the longest time. Okay. And uh, it was governed by custom generally. It was in 1985 that the PNDC introduced PNDC law 112, mm -hmm. which sought to require registration of customary marriages. What the significance of that legislation is that it sought to Retroactive, uh, retroactively involve marriages that were contracted before the law was passed. Mm -hmm. So if you contracted a marriage in 1983, 1984, you still had to register it under that legislation. Mm -hmm. But the thing about it was that it failure to register didn't invalidate your, your customary marriage. What it did was that it prescribed, it prescribed criminal sanctions for failure to register. So for something that was intended to benefit you. If you fail to do it, there are criminal sanctions for it. But if, I, if, if you didn't register, it didn't invalidate the marriage. That was what was enforced from 1985 to 1991, yeah. when there was an amendment where it was optional. So now you are not under any compulsion to register your marriage. You can register it if you want to. Yeah. So that is what prevails now. There's no compulsion, it's, it's optional. So the question is, why register your customary marriage? We all know that customary marriages are between two families, and that is where the security and anchor of such marriages um, hinge on, in that you require the two families to set to agree. If a woman is already married, there's no way the family is likely to contract a second marriage if the first still subsists. So based on this, people do not see why they should formalize it because it was a function of society. And so people now would ask, if this is what still uh, is in force and it's still families that sit to decide whether people should be joined as a couple or not, why should I take steps to go into a formal space to reduce this whole uh, fact of our marriage into writing and have a document to show for it? <laughs> well, but before then, let's, let me just say, let's have a look at certain historical perspectives with what pertains to the customary, the view. Mm -hmm. I, I, I have always postulated three views, that is Sabah's view and Allah's view. Let me just give you, Sabah says that he who desires a woman, whether maiden or widow in marriage, must apply to her family or persons in local parentis for consent. And without such application and consent, 
there can be no betrothal. Nor is there any remedy for breach of promise of marriage. That was Sabah. Clearly, Saba didn't contemplate divorces. Uh -huh. so, so, so that's what <laughs> we'll get there. Then let's look at Allah's view. He says okay. that breach of a bare promise to marry, which has not led to the establishment of the betrothal status, often involves no legal liability to compensate. Ghana Kashmir laws conform to the general pattern in this respect. So an action for breach of promise of marriage are found in a native cause, etc. So now why they need to register? Building upon this historical view, it is also primarily because families need to know who has come for their daughter, so to say. And no need for you to be bringing in witnesses every time that your marriage is put into question. Because I, I believe that uh, in as much as uh, the presence of witnesses were necessary as a feature to the validity of the marriage. It also does not mean that any time the validity of your marriage was called into question, you need to produce those witnesses. Mm -hmm. So I basically believe, and if you look at the, if you look at the legislation, it neither minded it. Well, your witnesses could die. Praise the Lord. And when <laughs> they are dead, your document then can speak for you. Yeah. So I think one of the main things is a documentary benefit. Yeah. Because I have not seen anywhere in the law that it confers on you certain strain advantage. Exactly. You know, I'm sure maybe at another time you talk about those other aspects of the path three. But the, I don't believe registering your country marriage necessarily, apart from the fact that you are presented with a document which speaks to itself and clears the air. So basically, well, you need to register it. And maybe also for the feeling of feeling good, especially for the women. You know, if I can speak, forgive my language. If I can go to the local <laughs> terms, you know, from where I'm coming from, you know, to show that, yes, now she's married. <laughs> because most of them compare themselves to those who are married. And the part three, the yeah. And the part three, very good. And the fact that they have a marriage certificate, you know, some document to show. So maybe I'll post the Edna may come in. But basically, I don't see any legal benefit that can be quantified as to the essence of the registration of the settlement? I think there are. And okay. it speaks mostly to evidence. Okay, that's, yeah. that's, that's correct. And that alone is a great convenience, um, assuming. And when I did not spoke earlier on mm -hmm. about um, PNDC Law 112, mm -hmm. which made it compulsory to mm -hmm. register, mm -hmm. straight away I tried to put myself in the minds of the lawmaker, or in the shoes of mm -hmm. the lawmakers, and ask what would make them insist, especially riding on the back of PNDC Law 111, which also came up around that time, speaking to interstate succession law. And the idea that interstate succession law was to help protect spouses and children where um, there was a death without a will, and also to remove that inheritance in uh, absolute terms where you go with your customary inheritance in a way that you remove the direct family of the deceased from benefiting from their uh, relative's yes. estate. Yes. So if you have to come to court to apply for letters of administration, this could be a way. Why? Because customary marriages can have multiple people involved. The man can have four women and other concubines sometimes. So how do you differentiate between those who are married in the strict sense and those not married in, without any inconvenience, such that if the family is met and you are not advanced in age, your spouse has passed on, you are coming to court, all the witnesses have died because probably you were the youngest people involved in that um, ceremony. How do you call people to testify if other wives are challenging the validity of your marriage? So I agree with you, but like I stated, yes. the benefit there is the documentary benefit. Yes. Beyond the documents, evidential what value. else? The, there's what? So, so, Evidential, so, yeah. Yeah. Evidential yeah. yeah. So beyond yeah. the documents, because it's not like uh, it That's what speaks on to you. the validity yeah, of the, the marriage. Of the marriage. It's just proof that there is something. Exactly. That but I like, you can I like something you, you, you said. You said yes. there may be concubines yes. somewhere. <laughs> now, to, 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 let's come to the present generation. Yes. And let me use the term side chicks. Yes, so if there are side chicks there, and the side chicks also help the man 
in all the things that he acquired. Yes. In the absence of this document, that is why you have a lot of challenges. Yes. So we can equally see it as a benefit. Helping the man is not enough reason to get benefits from his estate. Okay. If you have children, those yeah, children yeah, will yeah, be taken yeah. care of yeah. so because, yeah. I mean, and that doesn't even matter. It doesn't even matter whether you were married or not. No. But if you claim you were married, an easy way is to yeah, have this, right? Claim married at custom. Yes. Then it's an easy way to, yeah, to establish whether you were indeed it's just it's more of like prima facie evidence. You need to go Some beyond security, that. right? Yeah, yeah. Because for for the sake of yeah, for the purpose of evidence, it provides some security. I think that's. I, I think even though it's not compulsory, you don't lose anything by doing it. You that actually is, gain actually something gain, of yeah, evidence. Yeah, yeah, something of you know, evidence. You know, it's it's. Yeah. I think it's it's a very important thing, and that's why at the time to encourage people, people yes. <laughs> they made yeah, it they criminal made this, to yeah, fail yeah, where you fail to do that. To do, exactly. But that has since changed. Now it's a matter of choice. Yes, a matter of choice. There was some research I saw in 2004. Mm -hmm. I mean, the registration had dropped drastically. I, mean, yeah. I, I, I see why. If the man is allowed to marry many women, yes. what does your certificate cure? Uh, it doesn't Apart from you having it for other things. Maybe you work somewhere to prove that your spouse can have benefits. You can show that instead of having to call your entire community to come and attest yeah, to yeah. your employers that, yeah, indeed, we are validly married. Yes. You want to travel, you filled visa application forms, they ask for proof of the marriage, you can have a document rather than bring the whole community to the visa office. So I think these are the things, but when it comes to... And you know, beyond that, if, for instance, the man decides to contract a monogamous marriage. And you subsequently. Are claiming, subsequently, you are claiming that there's a validly subsisting customary marriage. Then this could be some evidence you can build on, even though yes. you can call witnesses and all that. Yeah. So for me... Especially where your witnesses are no longer within the exactly. jurisdiction or... Or, 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 or dead. dead. Yeah. Or dead, which is possible. This or is unwilling. Or, yes. That's because possible. you can have witnesses who decide that they like the new woman because <laughs> probably you, you were not giving them something that they wanted or yeah. they didn't get along with you. And they can pretend that you actually were married and support somebody uh, else's exactly. marriage. Exactly. I, 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 I dealt with a similar case where we, so, we had so, to. So in the absence of not, not watering down the importance of the evidential advantage, mm -hmm. is there any other thing to it? It's all about evidence. I think it's all about evidence. And comfort. Also, how people who um, are married under the Part 3 of the Marriages Act tend okay. to feel they have a superior form of marriage, yeah, yeah, yeah. and Which they are quick to whip out the, the certificate. Yeah. So this is what, where you can also count it with yours, <laughs> largely. Yes. Uh, and does it afford you any protection against the possibility of the man going out to marry more? No, before you married, you knew that at custom, he's allowed to take as many. There's no ceiling. Yeah, at custom. So... It doesn't really offer protection. So where the four of you all have the certificate in hand? Yes. They are all valid. Yeah, and all this valid. is something we need to say, that exactly. if a man marries more than one woman, he marries even up to 10 women, they can all go to the right district's office exactly. and have it registered. Yes. So there can be five or 10 certificates, customer yeah. marriage certificates, in respect of one man, given that he's allowed to marry as many as he wants at customary law. That's what we are saying. Which That's cannot happen under part three. Yes, yes. But um, the <laughs> controversial thing now comes yes. <laughs> to bear. We always hear every day, customary marriages are potentially polygamous. Yes. Every day. That's yes. what we keep hearing. Yes. Because of the option of a man to decide whether he wants to stick with one or have more. Now, the law is silent as to whether a woman can have more Yes. Well, I, 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 I don't think it's entirely silent in that if you look at the definition, and the definition is, is in accordance with the contract extension of the various communities, mm -hmm. and therefore the Article 11 comes in, the applicable law yes. for the various customers. So it is what your the customer society accepts. Admits. So if your custom or your family frowns on the woman going for two or more husbands, then that becomes the applicable customary law. This is excellent. So assuming you come from East Africa or some other place, India, 
yes. where a woman is allowed to marry more than one, and you come to Ghana, mm -hmm. you can the woman can marry another Ghanaian yes. man based on her personal law. Yes, and and and, and let me let me chip in try to be controversial yes. here. <laughs> People meet me and Bishop Bishop Moses married to you. Yes. Abraham yeah. married too. Yeah. Jacob married more. And Solomon. As for David, Solomon. forget. Yeah. Solomon, forget. Are these people not going to heaven? And these are the pit tracks we are following. Yes. You see, but the thing is that just as we've stated in the Article 11, if you look at what was under the Old Testament and what is under the New Testament, but the caveat I always give to men. The bishop is preaching here. Mercy. Bishop, bishop. The caveat I always give to men is that even the one, mm -hmm. are you able to maintain her, make her beautiful, make her happy? How, why then do you want to What if he takes all play? the boxes? Exactly. And his personal law is that he can marry he more can than marry one. Man. Should the Christian law encumber that whole thing? So the difficulty will be if you decide to go under part three, then that one, that's, you, you cannot proceed. But you can have a customary marriage and yes. have it blessed in church yes. without, without going <laughs> for a monogamous yes. marriage. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. So in that case, would the church permit you, based on your personal law, oh, to take a second wife no, and bless that one as no. well? As for the church, it's solemnization of holy matrimony. One man, one wife. One man, one wife. So whether your customary law allows you, whether your mosaic law allows you, the present law which you hang in there, there's no way. I get a bit puzzled thinking okay. about it along those. I know we're digressing a bit, but probably we should just okay. let this matter. Okay. Um, people who um, proponents of your opinion now tend to refer make references to Adam and Eve yes. that there was one man one wife yes. but Adam and Eve were there before Solomon and David and everybody else yes. and yet they didn't go by what Adam and Eve you well, know went with the other thing the also is that hearts. it's because of the hardness of their, their hearts, hearts. Oh, okay yeah, so if because you want to follow the God pattern or want to follow the law mm -hmm. what the law has prescribed is what the citizenry is supposed to toll. The Adam and Eve theory is also flawed because okay. from scriptures, they were the only two people on the surface of the earth. That's yes. correct. Adam could, didn't have options. Okay. Okay. So if a man has not been tempted, where he's emerged this strong is against the temptation, <laughs> this, this you is can wisdom. say, <laughs> <laughs> that's fair point. you need to be this tempted first. Wisdom. Then if you say no, then that's different. Because even Abraham, the father of faith, had other women. Well, uh, <laughs> let's to, go back to to, to bring us back a little about customary marriage being poly, potentially polygamous. Yes. If you if you say something is polygamous, polygamous includes polygyny and polyandry. Exactly. Polyandry allows the woman to marry more than one. Polygyny allows the man to marry more than one. So for me, the moment you say something is potentially polygamous, implicit in that should be an admission that a woman can marry more than one. We cannot say for certain that customary law in Ghana prescribes generally. The practice has it's been... It's not even uniform. Yes, yeah, it's not uniform. customary law exactly. is different from yeah, one group to the other. Exactly. For instance, among the Everest, what pertains to maybe the people of our domain is different from the Apinis. What the Anglons do will be different from what Tom the Tong do. do. Yeah. Even within the Tong, there are subgroups. Yeah. And it may differ. So we cannot say conclusively that polyandry is Probably not it's in practice. We just don't know. Exactly. Maybe the, the, the Because until somebody raises a hand of objection, exactly. we might never get we might to never know about get it. it. And perhaps the anthropologists and the sociologists may help us here. Great. Because, this is a great yeah. time to go for our first break. Um, when we come back, we would pick up from where we stopped. Stay tuned. This is Law Express. have the conversation about uh, marriages without talking about the authorities that uh, the law puts in place for the solemnization of marriages. We have the registrar's certificate, we have a marriage officer's certificate, and then we have the special license from the registrar. Now Ghana is divided into marriage districts and each district would have appointed for that particular jurisdiction a registrar of marriages. And these people are appointed by the interior minister. Yes. And the criteria is that they must be fit and proper persons, which is a big problem for me because it doesn't say more. Fit yeah, is a physical cool. fitness. Yeah. Is oh. it the more muscle you have, then you are? Or are we talking of mental yeah. fitness? Yeah. And 
Yeah. And you must be a proper, proper in what proper. sense. <laughs> so they could also have deputies, okay, appointed by the interior minister um, for this responsibility or yes. duty. Let's now go on to the actual conversation today. Okay. Registration of customary marriages. So um, let me lay the foundation and be sure to take over. <laughs> there, I don't think there's any timeline for you to register customary marriage. Once you've gone through the process and you're done with the ceremony, the ceremony ends. The parties have any time to do it. It's not I say, okay, come within four weeks or come within two weeks. So you have unlimited time to choose to decide to register your marriage. And to add to that before you go on, yes. should you fail to register your customary marriage, yes. you do not commit any criminal, criminal offense, offense, unlike in times past. Pass. It is your decision whether you want to register or not yes. without any consequences. Yes. There are three main ways to go about it. The registration certificate or the marriage officer. Mm -hmm. And the marriage officers are basically the pastors who are gazetted or yes. the ministers of religion yes. who are gazetted. And the special license refers to the practice now where somebody wants to marry, let's say, in a garden. Mm -hmm. Because the law states that the venue must also be gazetted. Yes. Uh -huh. so, yes. yes. So in lieu of that. Mm -hmm. But basically the whole thing is about that you make an application to the registrar mm -hmm. and the registrar will supply you with the necessary forms of notice. And on these forms, when they are filled in, they must be posted on the district court's notice board mm -hmm. for the number of days specified therein. The most important thing is, is the statutory declaration. And it's because the law wants to know about the actual, the legal age or mature state of the parties contracting the said marriage. So you, you actually fill in the statutory declaration and depose to certain factors Maybe you are a person of a sound age, you are above the age of 21, you are working, you are staying here, you've consented to marry Mr. A, B, C, D. You are not related you by are not blood. Re exactly, you are not related yeah, by, yeah. by exactly. So basically, it's, it, it, it is not necessarily any complex procedure. So for our cherished viewers, all you need to do is to walk into the offices of any district court to make it practical, ask to see the registrar, and tell the registrar you want to register your Casper marriage. The necessary forms will be given out to you. You fill them out. If there are no caveats posted in or placed therein, you are good to go. So, so basically, that's about the procedure. Um, this procedure can only be started or commenced after you have fulfilled all customary obligations. So there must be a valid customary marriage before you decide to register it. Exactly. Exactly. Now, this thing about having to, uh, the requirement of having to put in that affidavit, yeah, the, the information, the declaration, the declaration yes. yes, about your um, relationship or the lack of yes. any uh, blood relationship. Yes. yes, our laws kick against incest. Exactly. But marrying a sister-in-law, a brother-in-law, where your custom allows the yes. same, or marrying the distant cousin, yes. where some customary groups allow I that. Allow that. How does that come to play with this whole space? Well, so the position of the law, the Section 3, you see, is that it requires a party or both parties to the marriage, if they so wish to register their marriage, to attach the statute declaration. And this statute declaration must indicate, or it must be attached fine to the application of the marriage, it must indicate the names of the parties to the mm -hmm. marriage, the place of residence of the parties at the time of the marriage, and that the conditions essential to the validity of the marriage in accordance with the applicable Kashmir law have been complied with. So in view of all this that I've said, when you are registering it, the requirement for the statute declaration, that's where the law uses shall. Mm -hmm. And that is yes, where sir. it makes the statute declaration mandatory. Yes. And also the fact that another statute declaration must also be deposed to or supported by the parents of the spouse and persons standing in place of the parents, etc. Now, the sense of all this is to make sure that, like I stated from the beginning, the union between the two families are being brought on the same front into the office of the registrar. So the parents are agreeing 
and they are attesting the fact that yes, indeed, all the essential validity. That speaks to consent. Exactly. What I was talking about okay. was things that could operate against uh, uh, social policy. For like. instance, our law speaks against incestuous relationships okay. and unions. Uh, so if, for instance, you are related by blood, but per your custom, you are allowed to marry, would that be a valid marriage under our laws? And would this also be registered? Yeah, I think if, if the practice is against statutes, then it's you, void. Yes, void. If, if there's clear provision of statutes, and then our customary law goes against that provision, okay. I think that the statutes should prevail. Great. Yeah, the Act of Parliament should prevail over. So it is not automatic that once you claim to have a, sta a, um, a proper customary marriage accepted within your group, it will be affirmed by the state. Exactly. So like, example, you cannot come to register and tell the registrar that you are married to your sister, like black sister, Yeah. and expect the registrar to endorse. The registrar doesn't have power to invalidate it, but the registrar will not issue you that certificate. I, I hope I'm, I'm clear. Yeah, but uh, yeah. that becomes a criminal offense. It, it, it does. And then she, the registrar would have the additional responsibility, responsibility to, to report, report you to the, authorities. to the authorities. So you have sent in all these statutory declarations, yes. as Bishop has said. Yes. What next? Before, before we move to the next stage, yes. I think we need to talk about the essence of the statutory declaration. Okay, great. Such a declaration is just like an affidavit in a court proceeding. It's a so it's a self-serving document. Mm -hmm. If you lie in a statutory declaration, if you depose to falsehood in a statutory declaration, you ask criminal sanctions under the statutory declaration act. And even under the let's just say the marriages act, the mm -hmm. sanction for deposing to false information in the the the, the the statutory, statutory declaration. declaration yeah. So I think it's 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 what what it does is it's Bring sanity. Sanity. Exactly. It brings sanity because people can be funny. Also because when it comes to the fact of marriage, these are things that come from witnesses and people who are involved in it. It's their opinion on it. Exactly. So you need them to be honest as possible, as exactly. honest as possible. Exactly. To uh, such that whatever they file, they, they know that, look, they are giving their word and this is the yeah, truth. And they're sanctioning if you don't. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. when there are consequences for yes. you, any action, yes. then you are minded yes. to yes. act right. Yes. And we know too well that even in instances where they know there are sanctions, they, 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 they peddle falsehood in their yeah. affidavits. So yes. This is what, so what if is the love between them, they mutually agree mm -hmm. to depose to certain false facts in the statutory declaration? Mm -hmm. They get their certificate, they are gone. And then later on in life, the troubles of life blow in, and they want to go their separate ways. And then now those factual matters become an issue. Will they have any remedy here? No. no. The reason is that, the, the, the other thing is, it's two different statutory declarations that okay. come. The parents also are required. Yeah. If you are in love and you are lying, your parents are not a party to this your love arrangement. Okay. They are required to tell the truth. Yeah. I and it's not just parents of one party; it's parents of both spouses that bring in the statutory declaration in support of what you have filed. So I'm wondering how likely it would be for parents to support a lie for because, your because in practice, love when parties come to the unholy altars of divorce. Mm -hmm. A lot of things come out. And I think the essence of this powerful show as well is to educate the public. So for them to know that when they are doing any documentary things in relation to them, it does not matter the altitude of their love. They should always depose mm. to the truth. Because love today... But that goes to every other document that you are swearing on oath to. It does. Oh, you know? oh, yes, it does. Yeah. So it, it, it's not just about the it love does, situation. It does, but you know the love. emotional trauma attached to divorce matters. Yes. Unlike but, businesses but, per but se. But Bishop, Very well. how this is different is the fact that by the time you are coming to register, okay. where you are required to make depositions in this statutory or make declarations in okay. this document, you're already married. Yes, yes. They and because there's no time frame within which you ought to register, there's no pressure. If you don't have a valid marriage, 
Why are you trying to register it? Well, on the contrary, most of the ladies, permit me to say, like we are saying, they see this document as a golden, a golden ticket. plate, ticket. exactly, a golden ticket. ticket. So even though we might say they are not under any pressure, most of them keep hammering the man, let's go get it registered, let's go get it registered from the but one of the But this registration okay. is just evidence that you are married. Well, Tomorrow you, you can register with you a new I woman. You and I know. Because, no, when we say this, because of the example you are given, okay. I see that more in the monogamous arrangements okay. where they've had a church blessing and the woman wants it registered to secure her place as the one and only at that particular time until the, situa the situation changes. Okay. In that space, I can understand why she'll be given pressure. But if you are married to a man who is allowed legally to marry as many as he pleases, and you do not need that certificate for your own comfort, but you're just pressuring him because you want to show off. And that is why that's I a bit problematic. the submission of Edinam. Yeah. Because most of the majority of public out there do not know this that you are saying. They don't really know the difference between registering a casual marriage and the one done under part three. Most of them actually think registering this casual marriage gives them that edge of I'm the missus. Yes. Unfortunately. Yeah, or, or, or crater. So ah, yeah. crater. Yeah. Unfortunately. We sampled people's opinion on the topic today. Let's take a listen. We react to that and continue with our conversation. This is Law Express. Don't go away. Registration of um, customary marriage and divorce, to my understanding, it's when as most of us know, a guy sends family members to a lady's house and then tell the families that he wants to marry her and then they give her hand out for marriage. And after the marriage, if things are not going on well and they, upon trying all their possible best and they realize, no, they can't be together, the, lady, the guy will send another drink to the lady's house and be like, okay, after everything, we've realized that we can't make it, we can't be together, so I'm actually giving out her hand to you. So from today onwards, she's no more my wife, and we are parted ways. In my understanding, customary marriage refers to a valid custom or tradition that belongs to a particular ethnic group. When it comes to how it is done, it involves people that are very important to their couple. So such people could be parents and close friends and relatives. When it comes to divorcing and in customary marriage, it doesn't go through any law procedures. It goes to the informal way, which is the same process that was done when the marriage was being initiated. So if the guy brought maybe drink and other stuff to the marriage, so acts in hand for the bride, when you are divorcing, the lady would have to return the drink in asking of divorce from the guy, or the guy can just go out when he is asking for the divorce without expecting any form of gifts or any form of things from the lady's family side. Customary marriage registration is actually not very rigorous or very um, necessary. But then a couple may decide to apply for that registration in writing to the Registrar of Marriage and Divorce. And in as much as um, that is not a requirement for customary marriage, it is important so that at least the law will recognize the marriage and there will be some sort of protection for the couple. So I think we have listened to some views from the public. Well, I might say I, I, I'm a little impressed because maybe I think when we were children, I don't think we would have had this These knowledge. These people are not children. Yeah, okay, let me say <laughs> years back, <laughs> they say about 20, 25, 30 years, mm -hmm. this knowledge did not abound, but it shows the knowledge of the citizenry now. Yes. Safe to say that certain vital things were missing in it, like the last, if it's the last one, or I stand to be corrected, is the last. Is the last uh -huh. I mean, registration is not an essential feature of validity. Yes. Uh -huh. So anyone listening to us should know that whether you register the marriage or not does not make the marriage valid or not. Yes. The key thing is the compliance with the acceptable 
things that the customary or the wife's woman is expected. And then I realized more of them were talking about registering the divorce, etc., etc. Mm -hmm. Well, so far as, again, I stand to be corrected in all my years of practice, when you are done with the dissolution of the marriage and you are issued the divorce certificate, that's it. I mean, you go back to the registrar to get a copy of it. And then bear in mind that you will we have... We are actually supposed to re register these divorces. Yes. But then when you go to the various offices, there appear not to be anybody there for the purpose. Okay. Yes. Yeah, the last uh, divorce I did, okay. I mean, I tried to follow through to have it registered. Okay. So it's on record, yeah, you know, nice. that you are divorced. The okay. same way there's a book for the marriages. Okay. There was nobody available to do that. But, but the truth is that once I've gotten my divorce certificate, I'm jumping, the order. The I'm jumping in the next boat to marry the next available woman. Well, that would be you, but yes. not everybody does that. Yes. So, yes. <laughs> yes. And for women, you might need it to prove that you are oh, indeed it's, it's, it's important. unencumbered. Yes, a man, probably not so, because of it's the function important. of a society. Yes. But for a woman, it might be very essential because if somebody wants to marry you and needs evidence but you have the you have you have the, the order uh, yes I mean, well no, the order is one thing itself. that's the order and you the know yes yeah the that's certificate, so. Uh, well so so like, like i was saying I, I think on the whole the views expressed are not bad mm -hmm. i think they are in tandem with what the law says yes. and maybe i'll let it in i'm coming to pinpoint yes. a few things yes. so I just, well. yes as david said i think the way they didn't particularly get it right mm -hmm. It's where they appear to suggest that you need the certificate to give validity to the marriage. You don't need that. Once your marriage is in consonance and conforms to the appropriate custom, that, that's what matters. You know, when people talk certificates, yes. everybody goes to ordinance marriage, yes. what they call court marriage, court marriage or what others call white church wedding marriages, or white or weddings. Whatever. We need to situate the conversation and we can say it, like we can't stop saying the f that this conversation is about customs. Yes, custom What they call home marriage. Yeah. Some people even call it engagement, yes. but it's actually the customary the marriage. It's a valid marriage. Yes. So when you go to have that ceremony at home, where depending on the custom, you pre present a Bible and a ring, you present cattle, you present kula, whatever it is that is required, based uh, upon the setting, when that is done, you are married. That's cool. yes. If you now choose to go to church to bless it, that's another that's conversation. Not right. If you choose to go to the yeah. Registrar yeah. of Marriages office yes. to change the nature yes. into a monogamous marriage, where it's now one man, one wife, that is different. Yes. What we speak about today on this show is where you have a valid customary marriage. You've married at home. Yes. You are now married. Two families came together. And you decide that I, I don't want to close the door on having other women, okay? So, I, but I, or I just want the marriage to stay in this traditional form because that is what I relate to. So it's no always about a man marrying more and that's why he wants to have a customary marriage. Yeah, yeah. You, you can just say, this is what we respect. Yeah, this yes. is what we want. Exactly. It's a choice. So once you have that valid customary marriage at home between the families, you say, okay, we just need a paper to prove it as a backup. Exactly. Maybe for our kids one day to see and all of that, yes. different reasons. And then you go to the registrar's office, okay, for that certification, which is that registration, different from marriage under the ordinance. Yes. I think we just need to keep saying this yeah, because when people hear registration, they just yes. assume it's ordinance. Yes. It's not ordinance. And I think another point we need to raise is the fact that as you said, there are people who will not want to convert their marriage yes. into ordinance. Because I think there's this practice where people convert their marriage. Then when they want to begin divorce proceedings, they return their drinks to signify the dissolution of the customary marriage. That cannot happen. So that's another advantage of customary marriages. Yes. So one of our um, um, contributors mentioned the fact that when you marry at home, okay, and you have your customary you marriage, gross yes, well and you decide to divorce, you just return drinks and follow the custom exactly. that is required. Exactly. But if you, after having your marriage, you now think that is an engagement and decide to convert it, exactly. 
some people honestly don't know they've converted the marriages. They just Most want to be blessed in church. Yes, yes. And because the church setting makes, makes it easier to sign, and they see everybody signing because they think that's the only way they can be a missus, yes. they insist on it, they convert it. So when you sign in court or you sign in your church to make it a monogamous marriage, it's now a different kind of marriage you've contracted. Exactly. And if you have to part ways, you must go to court. Exactly. And more importantly, it means that the customary marriage doesn't exist. You've cancelled out yes. your customary because marriage. there cannot be a subsisting no. customary yes. marriage and then ordinance marriage. No, no. It doesn't. So the practice where we've returned the drinks, we are now in court, I think it's a redundant yeah, practice. Yeah, yeah. You are trying to it's dissolve something that It's actually a waste of money at exactly. that point. You are trying to dissolve something that, has, that doesn't exist. Yeah. Yeah, because once it's converted, there's nothing, there's no customary marriage there for you to, to dissolve. It's time for a break. Uh, we'll take a quick one and then come back. This is Law Express. Stay tuned. that when the people married at custom decide to register their marriage, they need to put in an application which will spell out some requirements where they live, full names, everything, and uh, confirmation that they are of legal age and all. And this statutory declaration would be supported by yet another one from their, uh, their respective parents. So now they've given the required documents to the registrar. Yes. What's the next step? So when the registrar receives the required documents, mm -hmm. the registrar is required to publish the notice of application mm -hmm. for 28 days on a public notice board. I think practically yeah. that should be on the, the assembly board, assembly board yeah. uh, which would be the, 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 the public notice board. Most of the time, the district court is located within the assembly the, board. Yes. Yeah, that's true. For In most smaller yeah. communities. Yeah, most smaller yeah. communities. Yeah, that, that, that's been the practice. Yes. So, and then when the publication is done, I think uh, anybody who has an objection mm -hmm. to the registration of a customary marriage is allowed to put in a, that objection. Okay, or so even its validity. Its validity, yes. yes. We have some <laughs> questions <laughs> coming by way of social yeah, yeah. media. Okay. Okay. Let's, um, let's try to resolve them to the best of our okay. ability yeah. with the limited information we may be given. last year in her home. I want to be able to marry another wife in the future if I choose to. And my wife is aware of this and agreed to our customary marriage based on this. Just last week, she started pressuring me to sign at the Registrar General's department because she says she will need our marriage certificate to support visa applications for both of us. Although I want to travel, I do not want to change the nature of our marriage. Is there any way we can prove our customary marriage with documents apart from what she wants? It looks like somebody's been tricked to convert the marriage. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, that's, I mean, this goes to justify this episode on the exactly. show. Exactly. You know? But we must, we must deal with whether it's a conversion yes. or it's just a registration. registration. Yeah. Uh -huh. So if the lady just wants... Do like you we register the customary marriages at the Registrar General's department? Or the registrar of company's office. No, he's supposed to do it at the, at the, at the, at the exactly. That is exactly. where the devil is in the details. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, That's think, uh, yes. so I, I, I think that the lady is suggesting a, she wants a to convert it. Wants yes. to make so it that it's just her. <laughs> yeah, to make it monogamous. in a very sly mm -hmm. manner, yeah, right? Exactly. <laughs> so my my advice to him is that if he if he wants to be in a monogamous marriage, then he can go ahead and convert it. But otherwise. I mean, if it's a genuine case of needing evidence, like yes. a bishop has said yes. throughout the program, to, to support your travel application, your visa uh, application, yes. then this is a clear case of having to register your customary marriage just to have a paper, and it's, so you can go to your district, it's, it's, and that's what we've been discussing all day. Yeah, it's all day exactly. Go there, follow the requirements, yes, yes. the procedure, and then you would have a certificate yes you know, to um, evidence the fact of your customary marriage. Yes. And that is just as great 
for the purpose that she seeks. Unless, of course, this is all a guise to get you to convert the marriage so that as you're about to travel, nobody else comes into but from the space. the preamble, yeah. if the guy said, I wanted to marry again, and I discussed yes, with my exactly. wife, and she agreed. Yeah, before the fact of the yes, marriage. It's clear yeah. That. Uh -huh. yeah, but people change their minds, right? Okay, so then it means that now the lady wants to close the door to other ladies coming yes. in. Yes. It said that it's only the devil, even the devil cannot tell what's in the person's mind. Okay. Maybe she genuinely just needs documents to support, and she doesn't know that there's a possibility to register the customary marriage. And then in coming to this place, she's like, oh, Eureka, then I close the door as well. Yes. One stone for and two because, beds. Because in practice, a lot of women have done this. Yes. And then now when it's time for real divorce, in fact, even most of them even go to the extent of actually, co I mean, engaging legally, yeah, legally people too. to have their divorce matters done for them, them for purposes of travel and all this. Is. Oh, then, so they leave their husbands on paper. Yes. Like, yes while but the marriage just, yes, is still valid. Exactly. Like with between them. Yes. And then sometime in the year, now real divorce banks on the doors. And the men say, ah, but we've been divorced, divorced five, ten years five, ago. Ten. It oh, has happened. Yes. It doesn't stop you, okay, from having one under custom again. Oh, definitely. Post, post the divorce. Post the divorce. Yes. Yes. Yeah, it doesn't So you it. did it for whatever, yes. for paper purposes. Yes. Just because you should still be married for whatever, go back and then have a customary marriage done. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I think so. Right. But in order yeah, not to have all of that, just stick to your customary marriage, if you will. Yeah. It makes your life easier. Easier. That easier. is what easier. Um, our ancestors have always uh, <laughs> subscribed to. Exactly. Until Bishop and Co. decided that everybody must sign. So Mercy. they can police everybody. Yeah. Let's check out the second <laughs> question. Yes. I have three wives. My first marriage was registered by our imam. The second and third wives were married customarily at their various family houses. My first wife keeps insisting she's the only legal wife because she has a document to show. And this has caused a lot of fights in the house. What can I do? And where do I go to register the marriages between me and my other two wives? I need peace. Well, I see a mix here. Yep. I see that the first wife was married under the Mohammedan law, yes. which <laughs> designation is often contested. Yeah. Um, our Muslim brothers prefer this should have been named Muslim law or Islamic yes. law, yeah. not Mohammedan. Mohammedan but yeah. this is what our uh, laws provide, so would have to continue for consistency um, sake and compliance. So the first wife was married under Mohammedan law. I want to think that is a valid marriage, and okay. so she has evidence yes. by way of whatever document she's yes. showing. And the two, on the other hand, he did customary marriages, and there's nothing, no registration. Yes. So wife one thinks that she is the real madam. I'm sure for two reasons. She's the first woman. And the secondly, documents. she's the only one with the documents. So she's <laughs> making them see, she's peppering them, <laughs> and making them think that they are less, you know, wives. Yes. If she she thinks, wants to know what to do. Yes, if, if the first wife thinks they are lesser wives because she's the first, I mean, she's entitled to that. But legally, mm -hmm. the fact of has having been registered with the uh, imam does not make the other two less of wives. It's of. just a different form of marriage now. Exactly. Uh, and I think the man is entitled to, even under Mohammedan law, four. Four. Yes. But you see, the four, yes. I never hear anything about having to marry them in different ways. Different ways. Okay. You know? Um, does it mean that if you are a practicing Muslim and you marry your first wife under Mohammedan law, yes. you can go and celebrate a marriage in church with another woman? No, no, I don't think so. See? But customarily. You know, so this one was a function of religion. Yeah. These other two are a function of custom. Yes. And the two can go hand in hand. Yeah, they can go hand in so hand. based on that, yes. if he wants so peace, he can just go to the assembly yes. and then yes. register. And have it registered. And moreover, Mohammedan marriage is also potentially polygamous. Even yes. though there's a cap. So he hasn't gone he has beyond his four. <laughs> he has one more. He has one more. So he can still have one more yes. to have like valid Islamic or yeah, Mohammedan right. marriage. marriage. Exactly. Okay, this is an interesting one. It is. This is a very interesting one. But yeah, you right. can register. The other wives are 
at the same level as yeah, you in terms level, of yeah. validity of yeah, their yeah, marriage. There are no less of wives because you, you yours was registered with the imam. Now let's move on to the other leg of our conversation, which is registration of customary divorces. Yes. Same as with the registration of customary marriage. Yes. You should have done the divorce at home again. Yes. Um, return drinks, return the bride price, whatever it is that you need to bring back. Return the ring, Bible, whatever. In that's accordance with your custom. With your custom, yes. okay. So once you've validly done that, um, you are allowed to register this uh, divorce. Yes. I think what I need to add to what you said is that the Matrimonial Causes Act, which governs divorce mm -hmm. for marriages contracted under Part 3, yeah. it permits customary marriages to be brought to court under that act for dissolution. Yes. So if the parties to the marriage agree mm -hmm. and subject themselves to dissolution under the, under the Matrimonial Causes Act, then they will not be required to... So, to, to, to simplify to, what you said, yes. regardless of the form of marriage yes. that you embarked on, you yeah. can always come to court to have a divorce yes. pronounced. Yes, exactly. Because so, the, the and once right. you've done that, the court will issue an order, and then they would give you a divorce certificate. certificate. And yes. based on these two, um, many people would not try to register their no. divorce. Yeah, they want to register. Yes. Now, the question is, what is the procedure? Assuming you go to the house, you return your drinks, the family accepts it, yes. or whatever it's permitted within that culture to signify that indeed they've dissolved the marriage. What's the next step? The step is similar to the, what happens with the marriage. You so you apply to you register? apply to register. And then? And then there's a publication of, for 20, 28 days. Yeah, in the application, you yeah. still have to do the, the statutory, statutory declaration. declarations. The same statutory declaration. You and your parents, your the parents, respective parents exactly. as well. To make sure that you, know, you are not... <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's not being divorced without the other person's <laughs> exactly. knowledge. Yeah, exactly, without yeah. the other person's knowledge. You know, once all those things are satisfied, then, then the objection will come in again. So if somebody objects to the validity of the divorce... Yes or the fact that it should not be registered. They object as well, right? They object, yes. They can object, yes. Um, I try to see the sense in having parents involved in statutory, um, in the registration of customary marriages and the customary divorces. Yes. And it goes back to what you said at the beginning, that customary marriages are between families, yeah, you know, not the individuals. Not the individual. So you realize that whereas the other places just requires consent sometimes, that's in the Christian marriages, they want consent. In the ordinance, you don't even need the consent. Yeah. But when it comes to a custom, mm -hmm. to marry or to divorce, your parents must be a part, or yeah. some guardians, some elders must exactly. be involved exactly. for that to happen. It's really interesting. Doesn't it take and away it, yes, your freedom away. to do what you want? And I think that is also why it's more or less a basic requirement in the pleadings, even with ordinance, yeah. for you to state that all, all family attempts. Yes. Uh, because yeah. I think the courts want to know want to do that, that indeed. It doesn't have to be family, all attempts generally. Yes, Must it be family? Generally, but Whoa. It's just all Should attempts at really reconciliation, because it could be yes, your church, it could be right. counselors, right. it could be friends. Right. Whether their attempts were genuine or not, oh, they yes. are still, yeah, yeah, <laughs> they yeah, will still count, right? And, and I think, Married being between families, customer mm -hmm. married being between families is uh, evident in the fact that, it's fairly evident in the fact that in customer marriage, you don't even need the two parties to be present. The two yes. families can meet without mm -hmm. them and they can contract a valid mm -hmm. customer marriage. Under my mm -hmm. custom, yes. you are not required as a okay. necessary party well, to the whole marriage process. Neither your families can meet. Well, I mean, if you're there, it doesn't spoil anything, yeah, but, but they can dispense with your yeah, presence yeah, exactly. and still have a valid marriage. Yeah, exactly. Great. Okay. I think that in order to discuss the divorce proceedings or registration of divorce under custom, that can be a whole show on its own, yeah, right? It can, it but uh, we try to yeah, I mean, lay the foundation touch on it. For, but for why would somebody object to a divorce? To the to the registration of a customary divorce. It could be that the customary procedures were, were not, not followed, fully followed. Were not fully followed. You know, there's this practice where, in a very flippant manner, they send two people with drinks, two mm -hmm. people who are not even principal mm -hmm. members, or maybe mm -hmm. the, Friends. the lady's family is in Kumasi. Or the lady or alone goes <laughs> there. Kumasi or is in a hole somewhere, and then 
they send a friend in Accra, take this dream, go to this man, tell them that our daughter is no longer interested in the marriage. Customarily, that is problematic. It's been an interesting discussion, yeah. gentlemen. This has been Law Express. I was joined today on the topic, registration of customary marriages and divorces by Bishop David Ousitashi and Yao Edenam Kofi. Thank you, Council, for coming by on the show. My name is Noella Seidu. Till same time next week, goodbye.